What's up everybody? This is Raven Sky Organic Kitchen Living. My uh, mom had a flat tire in her car today. So I um, came to Walmart to get the uh, little tire plug kit. Some of the stuff they put with these tire kits are useless. I don't know if any of you have ever changed a tire before, but there's a couple options here. Uh, if you've got 378, 588, 797, this is um, a little uh, tire tackle repair. And really the only difference they put in here is um, the reason why it's you know more expensive is they got that little tire pressure gauge thing, which is only 96 cents. It comes down to like seven bucks if you're trying to buy that separately. This is the one I'm gonna get here. I bought this in the past, and the reason why I'm gonna get this is because it's um, ergonomic with your hand. And if you've ever changed a tire before, it's you've got to put a lot of pressure into the tire, and that uh, that back pressure comes right back on your hands. And it's actually really helpful having this ergonomic um, handle when you're uh, pushing into the tire. But you need to get this rubber cement because it actually helps seal up these little black things or the little black rubber that you push in there. But once you get this open and stuff, this is all just an open kit. So now you have to have somewhere to put it. And there's no sense in not having somewhere to put it. Unless you got something at home, a little um, Tupperware. So we're going to grab this kit for six bucks. This thing right here. Small watertight case. 588. I think this thing is really cool because you can actually, it's watertight and it's uh, not going to break when you toss it around in your car or put it in your trunk or wherever you're going to store it at. So this kit will actually fit inside of here. They fit right into this little box, which is awesome. Oh yeah, the san sanitizer fits in there too. So we're gonna go back to the house and I'm gonna show you guys how to plug a tire real quick. All right, see you there. All right, I'm back. So the tire is uh, currently flat at the moment. Um, I actually came out here previously, pumped up the tire, but nails or nothing in here. It's just like it got punctured from something like running over, I don't know going to use this um, this is a, a tire pump a wireless or wireless cordless tire pump um, I actually I bought this from HD and uh, believe it or not about a year or two ago I did a video on this before on a how-to so I'm gonna do another one another video so I bought this um, obviously if you've got this uh, this tool is only about 20 bucks 20 25 dollars or something like that from HD and um, I've got the four ohm battery that goes into it. And uh, this thing is super useful. One of the most useful tools that I have. Uh, I've never actually pumped up a car tire from dead flat. So I don't know how long it takes to do this. Um, the, the pump does come with these little uh, extra pieces in case you're trying to blow up a raft or a inner tube or something like that. So the... Uh, I don't have a stopwatch, but the video itself um, will probably tell me how long this is, how long it takes. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pump the tire up to about 30 PSI, and then uh, we're gonna check back and uh, kind of go from there. All right. So, the, uh, the downside to this um, this unit is that you, uh, the, the instruction says that you're only supposed to use it for five minutes on and then five minutes off. And the reason why is because the, uh, the pumping pressure uh, heats up this little piece right here. This little uh, part of the hose gets really, really hot. And um, over, uh, over time, this um, you know, will uh, start getting damaged and eventually break on you. So it's best to follow the five minute on, five minute off to let it cool down. And if you really wanna be sure that you don't ruin the, the, uh, the tool itself, um, I would recommend just doing five minutes on and 10 minutes off if you can. And I know that's a pain in the butt if you're out on the highway or something like that. 
but uh, that's really your choice. I'm just uh, giving you, you know, the advice that I would, that I that I personally take with this um, this unit. So I'm going to unplug this real quick. Uh, I put in a little bit more. Oh, and another thing is, um, you know, the the trigger is really sensitive. If you just touch it, it, it comes on. So the other thing is, this gauge is not um, completely accurate. So you're going to need to have an actual tire gauge um, when you're pumping your tire up, so you get it to the right pressure. So I have found that this tire gauge is roughly between five and 10 uh, PSI off from actual PSI of your tire. So I uh, went ahead and pumped it up to, according to this gauge, 30 PSI, which is actually 20. And um, you don't have to have a whole lot of air in your tire in order to, um, in order to plug it. Okay, so this handle here is kind of in the way or actually this piece here is actually kind of in the way of where I need to poke into the tire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back, I'm gonna back the, the, uh, the car up just a little bit so I can go in at a straight angle into the tire like this. Cause you gotta go into it at a, at a straight angle. And that's the downside of trying to plug your own tire without taking it off the car because you've gotta have enough, um, if, the, uh, if you can't get your tool straight into the tire, you're really kind of risking you know, puncturing a hole out the side of it type of thing. So you, and you've got to have all this pressure going into the tire straight in. I'm pretty sure this is where the hole is here. If I'm not mistaken. So we're going to push this in. I wish this tire would come out more. air is almost out of the tire, so we gotta kind of work quickly. And as far as I can tell, this is where the hole is coming from. So I'm trying not to put another hole in the tire. All right, so I got this in. Okay. Oh, what was in there? So pulling this back out, and that will help. That helps serrate the edges of the inside of the tire so that this black stuff can actually uh, stick to the inside of the tire. So we're going to thread this through the needle here. And the stuff was kind of sticky, kind of not. And then we're going to take the... going to take the uh, rubber cement, pop that open real quick. We're going to take this rubber cement. We're going to put it on top of here, and this rubber cement will actually help seal the tire itself. So just put a whole bunch in there. So back to where we put the. This is right where we got the hole at. So this thing is still kind of in the way a little bit. I'll try to do this left-handed if I can. This is where it takes a little bit of a lot, I should say, a lot of strength to push it in there. Okay, so I'm sorry you didn't get to see the, the final effort of putting that in there, but I had to really cram it in there. So yeah, um, nothing against the ladies, but uh, you're gonna be tested when you have to do this yourself, just saying. That's in there, okay? So um, probably just gonna let that sit for now. Uh, normally you can get, once this goes in here, you can actually take a pair of scissors or something um, and clip this right off. Maybe like a little straight edge, straight blade. All right, so we got the plug in and I'm going to, uh, we're gonna go pump the tire up, see how long this takes. Uh, this tire goes to, it's supposed to go to 51 PSI. So I'm anticipating uh, having to pump this on this gauge, on the, uh, the pump gauge, I'm gonna probably have to go up to about 60 in order to achieve, well, I guess I don't wanna go that high. We're gonna go to 50 and uh, take a measurement from there and we'll see how long this is. gonna let this cool off that was about five minutes and uh, we just about got the entire we almost have the whole tire pumped up in uh, five minutes uh, 
uh, so I'm, I'm anticipating we're looking at uh, under 10 minutes to pump this tire up with the uh, Ryobi, the Ryobi tire pump. So we're gonna take a measurement here real quick. Let's see what this, so we're sitting at about 34 PSI. Oh, hey, look, it's our little lizard friend. This little guy lives in our garage and he's got paint on his uh, back end. He's our little painting buddy. And he eats cockroaches, so nobody minds him living in the garage. All good with me. Okay, we're back, guys. We're gonna go fill up the uh, tire the rest of the way. I got another 15 PSI to go. So uh, I think we're done at this point. All right, everybody. I appreciate everyone stopping out in the uh, Florida heat here, about 90 degrees or so. So yeah, that would be a flat tire was a little unexpected this morning. So uh, I figured it was a good time to show you how the little Ryobi pump works and uh, just a little DIY on how to uh, fill up the, uh, or fix the flat on your car if you ever get stuck out on the highway or in your urban areas or wherever you may be. I appreciate everyone coming out. Oh, um, what I'm probably gonna do is um, throw a link down there in Amazon. And uh, if you want to uh, purchase that uh, little Ryby pump, you can uh, use, use the Amazon link down at the bottom and that'll help me support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, we've got a lot more content to come. I think uh, here, pretty uh, here pretty shortly, I'm going to be starting a new YouTube channel and this is gonna be dedicated to um, our family business, Organic Kitchen and Mercantile, which a lot of you are already familiar with. Uh, little promotional videos I've been testing out, but I'll, I'll let you know when I get that uploaded. And uh, thanks to everybody for stopping by. Appreciate it. It was a very good sky. So. Thank you. Getting ready for the hurricane, Tigger? No? You don't want to see it?